Hi guys, uh, this is my very first YouTube video. Um, this is all on my um, Titan TM25mm um, converted to CNC. Uh, what I have done is built a custom built box, totally enclosed with a Perspex front, 3.5mm, um, hinge doors that lift off, uh, ball screw conversion on the mill, NEMA 570 ounce motors um, on all axes, uh, ball screw conversion, custom built controller box. Um, what I've done with the controller box, I've mounted um, basically the PC, the, um, the C11 controller board, Keyling 5056D digital drivers into the, the whole box so that basically it's one box that does all. So, okay, I'll give you a quick close up here the way this all works. Basically we just have quick release little ball clips down the front down here. They just pop open. Here we go. Alrighty, what I've done with this machine is um, all the construction for all axes was all done with 25mm bright steel. Um, there is no aluminium used in the construction of this at all, except for the, um, the NEMA mounts. That's the only thing that, that has been used in aluminium. Um, the Z-axis block was carved out of a 75mm by 75 chunk of uh, bright steel, so it's one piece solid. Um, the whole machine's been repainted. It was gaudy green originally, but yeah, everything's been repainted. Um, what else have I done? Obviously the controller unit. It's a bit hard to see that actually, in the dark. But it has an independent um, on and off switch for the C11 controller board, uh, PC power, PC reset. Uh, the other buttons down the bottom there are for the monitor, up and down volume, channel up and down. It's actually an old TV that I've ripped the guts out of and um, mounted the whole thing into here. Um, reset button for the C11 controller board, standard controls for the, um, the milling controlling unit. I took that off to try and eliminate vibration in the head um, or any, you know, any shock to the, the circuitry that might eventually wear it out. So hopefully that should stop any uh, wear and tear on the electronics. Um, the other thing we have done is we got a 105 LED light ring that was actually a headlight off a car. We've mounted that onto the, um, the collet or the ring for the depth gauge. So that's all one piece. One thing you can't see, it's actually mounted in the back here, is the RPM sensor. This was originally gear driven. Um, Stuart got me a, um, a belt drive kit. Stuart from Central Coast sells the, the Titan TM25s. Um, Titan Machinery has been great for helping us out. Um, although I have voided my warranty, haven't I, Stuart? <laughs> I know that, mate. That's cool. I ripped this thing apart the day that I bought it. It's been sitting in my shed for a year, basically, in pieces. Um, due to work and other commitments. I haven't had time to finish off, but recently I have. Um, had a lot of time, actually. Um, but yeah, everything's done. Everything's finished. One thing I have done is I took... You know, I'll just move the table back a bit. I took 25mm out of the front of the table here to allow a little bit more um, Y-axis travel forward. Um, I didn't modify the back at all. I left the back standard. Uh, I took a little bit more out of the bottom of the Z-axis column to allow a little bit more down travel on the Z-axis. Um, I did also neaten the Z-axis column up with a grinder <laughs> because it was rough as guts. Um, same with underneath the table. It was neatened up a bit with a grinder, repainted. Everything's been repainted. There's no slot, no playing the gibbs. Um, I had to cut a slot in the block there for the gibbs to slide through just to make it look a little bit neater and get a bit more mounting plate basically to broaden it up a bit. Um, all Lovejoy connectors. Uh, what else have I done? Ball screws, obviously. These are um, in the end plates here. I actually used uh, annular contact bearings instead of a uh, thrust bearing, which per personally I think they're, they're fine. The loading on them was pretty well much up there with the thrust bearing anyway, so I don't think they're going to wear. Um, on the Y-axis though, <coughs> these ball screws were from um, Automation Technologies, and uh, the Y-axis ball screw was... The, the shank on it to uh, put the bearing on was actually really short, so I had to use a, um, a double row annular contact bearing for that, and it's not, I don't know, I, don't, I don't, personally don't think it's all that great, so 
I think that'll be coming off and I'll probably um, I'll probably put thrust bearings into that so I'll have to get a custom built uh, rod built or ball, ball screw machined up basically to suit that um, only because the shank on that was too short you couldn't actually put two rows of um, or a double row of uh, any of the contact bearings on there so I'd use this one bearing which was a double row annular contact which personally I don't like but anyway we'll see how it goes um, I've dialed it in, done the, the auto tune with Mac 3 um, 10 mil dials into 10 mil on the dial indicators I've checked it all with the dial indicator um, I haven't trammed anything in yet only because as I said the head's got to come off and I want to replace the bearings because <sighs> how to put it um, these bearings at the top up here are really noisy and growly they growl a fair bit and they actually heat the head up the top bearing up here um, it does feel like it gets pretty warm so yeah that's got to come out other than that it would be dead quiet you wouldn't hear a damn thing out of it um, AR16 collet that's really small I do have an AR32 so you know I don't know probably end up getting an AR25 later on because um, that's just really miniature good for engraving but that's about it um, what else? And for getting into tight corners, I suppose. But yeah, everything's been done with bright steel. No slot, no play. All the end plates, all nice and flush. No steps, no, no, nothing in it. All the end bolts were um, measured up properly, so nothing was indexed out. So everything lined straight up. I didn't even have to put any of the um, the pins back into it. You know the the you know I don't, I don't know what you call it, the alignment pins. I never put those back in because um, it actually lined up pretty good. Same with this, this is all actually three piece. There's no steps in it. Um, it's all good, it's all nice and flush. Um, what else? Yeah, so far so good. I'm pretty happy with it all. Took a damn lot of work though. It's basically been a year in the making. Um, as I said, I pulled it apart from the day I bought it. Um, it's never done any work yet. It's just finally back together. I still haven't put the spring back into the top. Um, other than that though, it's all ready to go. I still haven't put the limit switches on. Um, at the moment I'm just using soft limits. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to wire these things up properly on the C11 controller board. Um, I can get them to indicate, but I can't get them to switch through uh, Mac 3 and um, the C11. So if anybody knows anything about that, that'd be great. As I said at the moment, I'm just using soft limits on everything. So hopefully I won't crash it. All right, now underneath the table, what I've done here, I'll just quickly show you the top of the table actually. That's all recessed down this tray. It's all been recessed down 50 mil. So that'll basically trap 50 mil worth of chips down in there before I have to really worry about emptying that out. Um, the machine sits 50 mil higher. But what I have done underneath here, just hang on for a tick. get up underneath. Oh, this is probably going to be dark. <laughs> yeah, can't really see much. Alright, I have made the table so that you can get up underneath it and check the ball screw, muck around with the ball screw um, and you can also get up into the z-axis and clean anything out. Um, with the y-axis ball screw mount, I've that, that mounting block was um, bossed out to basically take the, the ball screw nut but um, it, it did limit your travel rearwards so I've mounted it this way so that I get maximum travel both ways it doesn't interfere with the front of the table believe it or not so there we go you can get everything underneath maintain it check it fiddle it lube the bearing up lube the ball screw up that's basically it yeah, at least you can get under here though and maintain it, that's the main thing. So yeah, there you go. But yeah, with the ball screw, uh, with the Y-axis ball screw mount too, I'd, the way I mounted on the Y saddle was I um, I brought it 25 in from the back, 25 mil in from the back, so that, that also gives you a little bit more rearward travel. Um, using the original mount, uh, you, you limit your, you're limiting your travel basically straight away. And the other thing too is the ball screw doesn't go all the way back. It's about 25 mil shy of the rear. So that um, technically it would throw a ball bearing out. Technically. So, yeah, we mount it like that, which gives us maximum travel. I think we've got uh, 100 and 190 mil on the Y axis, uh, 550 
on the x-axis and 290 on the z-axis. Mind you, I don't wind the z-axis off the tail, off the column. I'll make sure it stays um, right on the column. Yeah, so there we go. And that's basically it. But all steel though, no aluminium, so everything's solid. Everything's going to last. And the table that's hopefully going to last also. If I have issues with the PC mounted in here, what I'm going to do is to put um, vibration mounts up in the top up here to try and cushion it a bit. Up in the back up here is all the wiring, power board, all up out of the way. And also open the door on the front here. It's 3.5mm perspex on the front. I've got a double lap on this door here so that no chips fly out through the crack. So that all opens up, all the doors lift off. Checker plate sides, top, everything. Uh, 50 mil box tubing, SHS. Um, yeah, that's about it. A lot of work, but I'm very happy with it. I also have a rotary table, which I, I plan to convert to the fourth axis. So, I do have a heap of NEMA uh, 370 ounce motors sitting around here. I bought one of those um, cheap controlling, uh, Chinese controlling units, the, I think that was six, six, uh, six fifties or something like that. So yeah, got one of those floating around anyway. Piece of junk, but we'll use it. Yeah, so there we go. Hope you make sense of all my gibberish. It's the first video I've ever made. First YouTube video I've ever put up. A few guys have been asking about this for a while, so... Here you go, here you go Stuart, Central Coast, Titan Machinery, um, Crud CNC, I hope you dig it, because I'm going to be nagging you about a few things lately. <laughs> I'm going to ask you how you've done your power draw bar and your limit switches, so be prepared for an email, Luke. It's on the way, mate. But there you go, mate, all done. Beautiful. See ya.